I carry the burden for um, these past few days and being in the garden and, you know, just ministering to the Lord. And, you know, it could go on for hours because there are theophanies, there are visitations, there are uh, in fillings of the Spirit that take place during these, these, these times. And it's actually quite refreshing and, and, and beautiful for me personally. But, you know, while I was praying, God actually spoke to me, uh, through me. I know that sounds weird, but He spoke about sacredness of what we carry. You know, a few weeks ago I shared with you about how you can lose your crown because you don't destroy the thing that God hates. When God hates something or it is evil to Him and we hold it dear to us, there's a contradiction there and uh, it, it hurts Him. But on the other hand, and I want you to listen carefully to me, he said to me, Kim, what I placed in many, many people is sacred. And if anybody touches what is sacred to me, then it is the end for them. And he brought me to the Ark of the Covenant. And I'm going to, when I speak today, I want you to listen how it, it, it is so intricately, intricately woven into what is happening today in our world. So when I speak of ancient scriptures and I use examples, I want you to put it into your now and your present, because it's not just an historical story, but it applies to today, which prophets often did. So he said to me, Kim, if something is sacred to me, it must be sacred to you, and it must be sacred to others. And so what I've done in the United States of America is sacred. And there are people on every side that are trying to destroy what I deem sacred. And it's not going to happen. Because I have upheld this country and I started it from the beginning of time to spread the light to the rest of the world. And so what the Lord said to me was, I want you to take note of the disasters that took place over the years and see that history is basically repeating itself. And so I, I found a book and looked at all the huge disasters, the his, history's worst decisions that were made, and how we see history repeating itself. And we can start right from the beginning. In the beginning, Adam and Eve, the original, I would say the original idiots, and Nero in the burning of Rome, Pope Sylvester declaring it's the end of the world. And Napoleon, the march to Russia, King Leopold and the scramble for Africa, Stalin and the Great Purge. Many of you will remember if you studied history, all of these. I'm just giving you a few. The drinking of Jim Jones's Kool-Aid, the Jonestown suicides, the Y2K that never came, Robert Mugabe's Great Zimbabwe land grab. And you know, I can go on and on and on. And see, you know, people, we don't learn from history. And we've seen it unfolding before our very eyes in this nation. And so, while I was praying, this is another theophany, and this does not happen to me a lot. I had a strong fragrance of a rose. Now, of course, there are roses around in uh, California, and so it could have been a natural smell that I smelled, but it actually wasn't because there's unfortunately no roses in my garden. And um, I got this beautiful smell of roses. And I said, this is a sweet fragrance because, Lord, all I've been smelling is the stench of death throughout the earth. And because I did. And in, this, in these visions and dreams that I had the early hours of the morning, I, I had the stench of death. It was so terrible. And you know what happened in Nepal. And, now, uh, and all of the world that's happening right now is predicted not only by Christ and the prophets of old, that by present-day prophets, that the earth is actually rebelling against these, against, uh, uh, against what is happening on top. And so, um, so what I did was I, I said to the Lord, what is this that I'm smelling? And of course, we know about the rose of Sharon and the rose of the rose of Sharon, that's us. And uh, if you read Ecclesiastes, how beautiful it displays the bride and the bridegroom. And he said, there is a fragrance uh, of, of, of coming from the earth uh, that comes from my people that often stays my hand of execution. 
that often holds back my judgment, and it is scriptural that I'm telling you because it happened time and time again, and I'll show you today. Many of you are in fear. Many of you are worried because when a prophet of my caliber, when I say that I mean that prophesies hope and life, emerges with, you know, with, with words that I, that I spoke, cataclysmic, a period that is coming. Well, many, many prophets have said that. And, and of course, I oftentimes said, well, oh, that, that, that can be stayed and, and that doesn't necessarily have to happen because it's a lot of doom and gloom. But the Lord spoke to me clearly and said, where there are roses, there will the people gather. And it was a riddle. And I, I immediately went to uh, my Google and checked, you know, where roses grow, because roses grow everywhere. But I came across a, the British, the uh, English roses that grow in the United States of America. A very interesting little study, and I don't have time to share that now. But it was a riddle the Lord spoke to me. He said, because there will be, uh, and I thought of Pasadena, California. And, you know, there have been so many bad prophecies about California, and of course I... I immediately thought about uh, the Rose Parade and the Rose Bowl, and, and I suddenly realized that God may have been speaking about this. Then he took me into Louisiana uh, by the Spirit and showed me various states, but I, which I don't want to speak about today, but <clears throat> I saw, first of all, I had a deep sense of urgency. And this urgency come, came, it, it came to me due to the rift and the hostility that has been in the United States, of America due to the current administration and Israel. And Chuck Messer has clearly said that his deep concern for America is if it turns its back on Israel because that's always been the request, that's always been the requirement for the United States of America to be a friend to Israel. So, you know, I, I had this deep sense of urgency and, and for a long few, as I said in, in my communications to you, for a long few seconds, and, you know, God can show you a lot in a few seconds. So the, the deep sense of urgency that I felt was as this veil opened up, I, uh, I saw a series of events in the United States of America planned internally and externally that would ultimately affect our lifestyle and very specifically our children. Uh, as I said, you know, not to be a friend of Israel is, 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 is a disaster. And God chose us to be a friend of Israel. But what God showed me and stated clearly that it was his desire, and you need to listen to this, everyone, to cease the hostility between America and Israel in order to prevent some of these catastrophes that are planned and will be revealed. I'm going to play your prophecy very quickly, but not now, after I show you this one, about what God spoke through me to President Obama clearly, Went, got to his ears, and this was a warning from a prophet to him. He would make mistakes. George W. Bush made mistakes. Um, Ronald Reagan made mistakes. Uh, uh, Clinton made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but there are some mistakes you cannot make when you choose to go against the sacred thing that God put into the very heart and the soil of this nation. And so that's, and if you hear me getting passionate about this, it is because I am. I've been in my war room, my garden, for days, and I've seen things, and I've seen children being killed and destroyed. I'm seeing their futures taken from them. I saw money, the, the fall of the markets and the money, and saying, God, but you spoke about us being dead free. It's in the contradiction. And he said, this is exactly why I need some action from my people. So God actually looks at his people first. Judgment begins in the house of God. Blessing begins in the house of God. So he's looking to us so we can, we can cause relenting, we can cause repenting, and we can stay his hand in many instances. Of course, God doesn't plan a lot of these. It's from our enemy. So um, I, I want, want to tell you one more thing that I saw. And uh, it, it, was, it was... Let me tell you what the words were. Uh, the, the words that came to me were social and political upheaval, economic upheaval, deluge, and violent action. And we are seeing this happening in other parts of the world, in third world countries. The Spirit of God spoke uh, to me about the earth experiencing a violence that would produce changes in the earth's surface and deeper 
He spoke that clearly to me about a shift in the Earth's surface and deeper. And he said it would be for a greater purpose than people have said, disaster or judgment, but to unlock some treasures in the Earth. Now, I know that, you know, it, 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 in, in our world we say, oh, come on, you know, how can that be? But we've seen God speak to signs in the sky and to planets, to me, to uh, treasures in the sea and to the, uh, you know, the dolphins, and all this kind of stuff. And now we're seeing how God spoke about the, 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 the earth and the earthquakes, which I prophesied a few weeks ago. These are not just earthquakes, as has been prophesied before, that would bring destruction or to be judgment. Uh, and that very well could happen. But the point I'm saying is there are also earthquakes that will bring forth revivals or a restoration in the, the econo economic world. Um, speaking of that, I'm speaking of Firepoint. Many of you are interested in that because you know that God spoke to us, gave us a name, uh, Firepoint, and said that um, this was going to be unlocked and at a certain time to bring great prosperity to the body of Christ. If you believe that poverty is a virtue, if you believe that poverty is characteristic of God's people, you are hopelessly mistaken. No, I don't believe in the get-rich-quickly uh, issue <clears throat> that has been taught, <clears throat> or the prosperity gospel, that God blessed Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and blessed many throughout the scriptures and gave them great wealth so they could be affluent and influential. What we're seeing <clears throat> is the destruction of, of uh, the economy and, and finances when God has clearly said it is des his desire to bless his people. And it's throughout scriptures you'll see that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I did, however, see um, something as clear as I saw Hurricane Katrina. Now, you saw it on the intro, but let's just play that very quickly, and I'll, and we, I'll come back to you. Oh, New Orleans, God speaks to you from Houston tonight and says, enough of this, for the judgment is coming, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I will take uh, the men that have stood in faith, raise them above the flood uh, that shall destroy those that constantly bicker and stand against my servant Moses. Enough of this, but I will take the curses and the bodies will even rise. They will come forth on the water. Okay, so <clears throat> what you're hearing there is what I got just before it happened. I was in Houston, I picked it up. Um, most people say, well, what are you speaking about uh, that fight against uh, my servant Moses? It was meaning touching that what, the which was sacred. Remember something, our, our fathers, our, our the beginning forefathers that started and, and brought the beauty of Christ into our whole constitution and everything. These men, this was sacred to God. So when you start touching something that is sacred, <clears throat> I'll show you that in the scriptures. It, it, what happens is there will be a destruction of those that touch the sacred thing. So it, it doesn't mean that God's going to judge the, the church or righteous men. It means that they were all going to be outbursts in some way. And this was just one of them. <clears throat> and he spoke about protecting the men of, that have stood in faith and to raise them above the flood. I remember telling a warning some leaders in the region to pack your bags and get out. I'm not one of those pack your bags and get out people. <clears throat> but I told them, get out of there um, because you will die. And they did. They escaped it. So that was, and then when it came to Houston, I had friends, a dear friend of mine, uh, Greg Scoggins and others that wrote to me, said, shall we run as well? I said, no, you don't. Don't run. So, <clears throat> so I saw that happening. Many of you are saying, well, where is this going to happen? I have not been given that yet, but I imagine that while under the anointing and by then, it's going to come out. Um, but again, God can help us if we just do the right thing. <clears throat> I also saw a series of focused terror events, terror events in the United States of America and Europe. Now, you're probably saying, well, you've seen that on the news. We know that could possibly happen. No, no, no. no, no this, is, this is very well planned by the powers of darkness. Cataclysmic is the word that I heard. A period leading now, starting now and going into summer. And if God does not intervene, certainly there will be many, many, many deaths. And I saw children. And so that's why I've been praying. I've been weeping. I've been standing. At one time, I asked the Lord to, to put a, 
bit of machinery on outside my garden by somebody so that I could actually scream and shout because the neighbors will stop me. And suddenly this huge machine started making a noise. I don't know what they were doing, uh, but they were doing something in the road. And I prayed for about an hour, and I must have hell itself was trembling, you know, at the sound of the passion and the fervor that was coming from my voice. <clears throat> so, um, as I said again, I heard the word social, political, economical, upheaval, deluge, and violent action. Now, what you've heard maybe isn't anything new because you've heard that from others. However, <clears throat> I did see Russia and Ukraine again. I will not allow my people to fall, but I will bring light, light, light into Iraq. I will bring light into Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, yes, Syria and Iran. A massive revival that will affect China and will affect Russia as well. And Putin shall have no control for what I shall do. Well, I will slay him, says the Lord. This day has come for vengeance. What? What is this I hear about Turkey? What is this I hear about a man who says, I am God? What is the stench that comes to me, says the Lord, that a man who calls himself a king says, I am no longer the king, I am a God. And Yemen, what about you? The Queen of Sheba came from you to bring gold to Solomon. And now, what of this? The Queen of Sheba honored my Solomon, my Israel. What are you doing now? And what of this king that says he is a God? I say to you, it shall be a very short time and you shall find out that you are not a God. You shall find out that I am the Lord and I stand no one to say he is a God when he is not a God. Why from Russia is that one saying he is a God? I've already told him I will slay him. Um, you see, these are, are, are stenches. What I'm trying to show you, what he's trying to show you in prophecy is that if you, if you look at the whole world, you see it from his view. Um, you know, we, sometimes we get caught up in our little world. And you don't realize that God is seeing every person, their hearts, desires, the evil, the iniquity in countries, and he weighs it because he's a, a God who judges with equity. And then he looks upon America and, uh, and upon Israel and upon other nations that have millions, tens of millions of righteous people crying out to him. That's why I gathered you all today because God spoke to me and said a lot of these things that have been planned can be stayed. And I'm going to show you a few things in a minute. One thing I want to... Uh, add before we, I get you to teach you just for just a few minutes on, on something that happened when the Ark of the Covenant was captured and how the sacredness of this nation and the principles that we've, uh, that we've instilled into the people way from the hundreds of years ago has been almost taken away from us. Third world countries are holding it dear to them now. There are countries that, that God spoke about that would have massive revivals because they took some of the stuff that we deemed sacred and brought it into their own uh, countries and their own hearts. You may not see it, but Iran is having one of the... So there are more people getting born again and saved in Iran than anywhere else in the world. So, you know, those things that God spoke about years ago, um, are, they are happening now. But I want to show you something today, and you and I together are going to stay the hand, and we're going to ask God to cover us. And I'll show you how that's going to happen. Um, one thing that I, I, I want to say is that um, that the Lord spoke about slaying certain leaders, and then He went he spoke to me about prophecy that, well, the word that He gave to me to President Obama regarding having a captivating love for Israel, and there was a condition, and that His His power and influence would be removed if He didn't have a captivating love for Israel. Not only has he lost any love that he's had, but now there is a disdain for Israel and its prime minister from President Obama. Then the other thing he said, which I believe is now beginning to play out, is the prophetic word that God gave him about if you turn your back on Israel, 
I will scrape you from the streets. Now, I'm not going to play that prophecy now because I'm feeling the Spirit of the Lord telling me to just move on and a prophetic word is, 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 is brewing in my spirit right now because many people are saying, Lord, what is the time? Lord, is it the time now of great judgment? Is this the time of tribulations? Is this the time of trial? Some of you are praying out now and saying, God, I'm fearful. If this prophet that prophesies hope and life is speaking these things, what a, oh, woe is us. No, God's Spirit is speaking to you now where you are, and He's saying these words to you. If you would humble yourself and pray, my people, not, not the Gentiles, not the heathen, if you, my people, would humble themselves, would pray, would turn away from wickedness, then I will hear from heaven, and I will bless you, and I will turn things around. That's the word of the Lord that's coming to me now. Many thousands of you are watching and saying, how can we do it? Well, first of all, we can pray together. We can pray repentance. We can pray and ask God to change things, to change the heart of leadership, to replace leadership. But also, we would bring an, an, in, an offering of incense before him and say, Lord, today, if our president will not bless Israel, if the American people, many of them, will not bless Israel, then we as the people of God will make a stand and we will bless Israel. And when we do that, we pray that the battle would end and that you would bring life into this nation. Oh, man. So the Spirit of God just spoke clearly. He's showing us that there's still a chance. I'm going to move very quickly now because I'm sensing it's time for us to, to stand together and pray because... But I'm going to share about, share about the Ark of the Covenant. I don't want to rush this because it's very important to many of you. And that's why you are right now. And that's why I'm in my garden, shaking right now, actually, as the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. Because as I was prophesying, another curtain was opened up. And I saw beyond that. And I saw people in streets on their knees. People in the streets of America on their knees. You, you probably would say, that's never going to happen, Kim. Well, I must remind you today that when the prophet Elisha stood outside... Of, a, of the city that were, they were in deep problems. They were starving. They were actually eating each other up. The prophet Elisha said, tomorrow about this time, there's going, to, going to be a change in your economy. And one of the soldiers said to him, this will never happen. Even if God opened the windows of heaven, this won't happen. And Elisha looked at him and said, you will see it, but you will not touch it. And many that could say this could never happen, I say, you may see it and never be a partaker of it. I saw people on their knees in the streets of America and crying out to God, whatever it takes, O oh Lord, please do it. Whatever it takes, O oh God, you do it. Let's get us to the place where we call to Yeshua again and we call to your name and it shall happen, says the Spirit of God. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share this, this, this one thing and I want you to listen to me about the Ark of the Covenant and I'll make it as quick as possible. Because I'm feeling it's time for us to step forward and pray our prayer. It's time for us to step forward and to lay hold of the cross. It's time for us to step forward and do what Esther did. If I perish, I perish, but I will not hold back. I will believe and I will have faith. To do what Jacob did and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. I feel the spirit of that present right now in every house, in every home. I pray that you'd lay a hold of him now and say those words, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go until you do what I pray that you would do and that you pour out of your spirit upon my family, that you heal me, that you restore us. You know, the presence of God is very powerful right now. And many of you feeling what I'm praying is coming from the Holy Spirit himself because we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit prays through us. So, what happened with the Ark of the Covenant? To, to try and tell the story as best I can, the children of Israel were in a place where they had lost their vision. Eli was the high priest, he was wicked. His sons were raping the woman. His sons were taking of the offering and caused Israel to despise the offering. And God then judged them based on the fact that Israel despised the offering giving to God. Whether it was praise or actual offerings, they stopped. 
And there was no open vision at all in Israel. And what happened was, the Philistines came against Israel. Israel was so confident they will win this battle. They didn't even need the Ark of the Covenant. And they went out to battle and 4,000 men died. They came back and the elders said, why has this happened? And they said, bring the Ark of the Covenant into the midst of us, for it shall deliver us. They called the most sacred thing, not a he, but it. God was in the Ark of the Covenant. His presence was there. Where did we move from? Removing the name of God from our schools. Removing the name and calling it an it, secular humanism. And that's what they did. And so they went to battle. They started jumping and shouting all the Israelites because it was in the midst of them. The Ark of the Covenant was there and they thought it was a formula. The Philistines are listening and they said, what's going on? Why are the Israelites jumping and shouting and, and rejoicing that the earth is shaking? And you know what they said? They evaluated it themselves. They understood, listen to this, that the Ark of the Lord had come into the camp. This is the Philistines. The Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into their camp. Even the Philistines knew that God was in the Ark of the Covenant. They said, woe to us, for such a thing has never happened. You know what they did? They said, let us act like men. Let us be strong men, secular humanism, and go and fight. they did? You know what secular humanism did? It went in and grabbed the most sacred thing to Israel, the Ark of the Covenant, and stole it. We want the Ark of the Covenant back. We want the sacredness that was once in our nation. We want it back. And we will do whatever it takes. If I perish, I perish to get that back. And you know, the, the, the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant applied it to their Philistine lives, and Dagon, their God, fell on his face a few times, and the bubonic plague began in the land of the Philistines. Rats came out, and tumors came upon the people, and they were dying by the tens of thousands. The bubonic plague came because they took something sacred into their hands. I've seen a spiritual bubonic plague amongst the, the, the heathen nations of this world, among the secular humanists, among the atheists, like you've never seen, eating them up. God is not pleased, but God told me, and he said this clearly, if my people would pray together with you, Kim, and they would give and bless Israel, I will pour out a blessing and bring this place that I call sacred back to the, per the perfect order for the season. Now, that's what I'm looking for in my house, in my home, and there's a very strong anointing upon me right now. What happened then was they returned the Ark of the Covenant because it, the sacred cannot mingle with that which is not sacred. It cannot. Des it is desecrated. And so they sent it back. And of course, it stood in Israel for 20 years. Now, I want to give you the opportunity, because many of you are being very moved by the Spirit. As I say this to you, I'm going to read to you out of 1 Samuel chapter 7. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read you something that happened. Samuel spoke to the house of Israel. He said, if you return to the Lord, He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away their gods. And Sam, Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you. It was a prophet praying. And they gathered together at Mizpah. They drew water and poured it out before the Lord. They immediately started with an offering. And then they fasted and said, we have sinned. Now, when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel gathered together, they went to attack them and were, they were on their way. And the children of Israel pleaded with the prophet, do not cease to cry out to the Lord. And I pray that every one of you watching would say that to me. 
Kim, do not cease to cry out to the Lord. Kim, do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of these these forces of evil that are taking over our schools and our children's minds. And now listen to what happened when they called to the prophet said, Do not cease to cry out. Samuel took a pure suckling lamb and offered it as a whole bird offering. And then Samuel cried out for Israel. And, the, and Samuel's offering was sent before the Lord. And as Samuel was offering the bird offering and praying, God thundered so loud upon the Philistines that it confused them and they were overcoming the presence of Israel. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and set it up and said, the name of this place is Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. Everybody listening to me all over the world, I want you to stop right now. I want you to listen to my words. I will not stop crying out for you. (coughs) I will not stop crying out to God for our nation. I will not stop crying out to God for England, for Europe, for these nations that God has placed in my heart. But America, what of you? I want every person that's listening to me, I'm going to pray and cry out to God with you. But I want you to prepare a pure suckling lamb. What does that mean? I want you to get your purest offering that you have. And I want you to bring it to God now. And I want you to cry out with me as we give that offering. This will be used to bless Israel. God said to me, Kim, if, if thousands of people would bless Israel today, you will see the difference in the, from the beginning now and going through summer, how I will protect you financially and I will cause people to fall on their knees in the street. How many of you want that? How many of you are crying out for that? I want you to pray, and I'm going to pray a prayer with you now, and we're going to do it together. I don't want one person turning away from your computer or television and saying, oh, I don't know about this. I promise you, as we give, God will cause your enemies that are advancing towards you to turn around with a thunder. It may not be a thunder like they did then. It may be something else that caused them to be defeated in our presence. Father of light, I call to you today. I call to you to speak to your people now. And as I cry out to you with them, I pray that you would keep your hand upon the nation, that you keep your hand upon your people, that you would execute vengeance against these nations that are rising up against us. And as we give this pure offering to you, would you hear us from heaven and hear our cries and our tears? Starting with Hannah, when she was weeping before the Lord in worship, and all of them, We do it today to you. Take our tears and our offerings. Now, each person watching me, it's a very easy thing to do. All you have to do now is pray and say, Lord, what do you want? What is a pure offering in your sight? It can be $5. It can be 10,000. It could be a a ring. It could be anything. I don't know, but he's going to tell you. And I pray now, Lord, speak to each person. This is the way I've taught you. This is the way we've done it together. And because of that, we've been able to bless Israel, bless the Jews all over the world, bless the Christians, and even bless strangers. Think about it. Now, Lord, speak to each one and show them what to give. Now, I want every person that's watching me, I want you to go. There's a red link below your screen, or you can go to the Bless Israel, whichever you feel. But today we're doing this based on the word that just came from God himself, from my will. Blessed, sacred God. Now, go ahead and do it. Go to that red link. You've never done it before. It'll take you a minute. Don't do nothing. Don't come empty-handed. And as you give, I want you to cry out to God with me and say, Lord, place your hand upon us. Destroy the enemy in the presence of your people. Bring restoration. Whatever you want to pray for. Pray it out as you give. I'm telling you that pure offering will cause God to execute your enemies right before your eyes. So you'll see below the screen there's a red link. You'll see that you can go there. It's probably the easiest way to go and do it now. And I want everybody to do something. And I want you to say this.
anybody. I am blessing Israel, not cursing Israel. Yes. And you do it, bless Israel now. Some of you can call if you want. There's a number below your screen if you prefer to call. There's the number and you just go ahead and call. Some of you have decided I'm going to do something big. There's a mailing address below your screen. You can do it that way. And we receive them and we bless them as well as we do each offering when it comes in over the next three days. And then you can text as well. I would suggest you go to 43-43965. Text the number 43965. And what you do is you put Israel. Because this is what the Lord has said to me. He said to me, Kim, if they will bless Israel, because remember something, we have now an administration that are basically turning their back on Israel, which means they're cursing them. We don't want our children to be scraped up the streets. Do you realize that the violence that is taking place is not based only upon brutality from the police? Of course, that that has happened and has happened before. And and it needs to be cleaned up. But, But this is because of an administration that has decided, first and foremost, to curse Israel. And they do, they may not be saying it loud. And I don't want that as my representation to God. So he said to me, if the people would bless Israel with word and with an offering, I would receive it from them as America blessing Israel, as Holland blessing Israel, as France blessing Israel, as China blessing Israel. Is Afghanistan blessing Israel? Iraq blessing Israel. I can go on and on and on. Wherever you watch, it's all over the world. Do it now. And watch what God does. I love you so much. And as you're doing it, I'm going to cry out to God for, for you and pray. I'm going to let them uh, just take over for a minute. Um, in fact, uh, Hannah, I just feel like you should sing that last piece again uh, after Face to Face. Um, I can't remember the words right now, but I, but I want you to sing it to him, please. Sing it and let the people, as they give it, let them worship God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand in my garden here. I'm going to stand in my garden and I'm going to cry out to God. And I pray that you hear them as they give and receive their pure offering, their lamb offering, and that you would do what he promised. Go ahead. <laughs> 